Now, Niger's coup leaders say they'll try uh, ousted President Mohamed Bazoum for high treason and undermining the country's security. President Bazoum has been confined to his official residence since being deposed by the military last month. The move to prosecute him comes after uh, the coup leaders uh, indicated that they were open to resolving a standoff with West African nations demanding the president's restoration. For days now, Niger's ousted president Mohamed Bazoum is being held in captivity by the country's new military rulers. Now the coup leaders are threatening to prosecute the former president. The government has gathered the necessary evidence to prosecute the ousted president and his accomplices for high treason and undermining the internal and external security of Niger. Following his exchanges with foreign heads of state and international organizations. On the streets of Niamey, people are feeling the consequences of the coup firsthand. Economic sanctions from neighboring countries have hit hard, including power cuts imposed by Nigeria. Some businesses only get around 90 minutes of electricity a day. Niger's economy is in danger of collapsing with these sanctions and threats from ECOWAS. I also think that ECOWAS' aim is to prevent the junta from being able to install itself and rule peacefully. At the same time, the military has put on propaganda shows in support of the government. In this stadium, thousands turned out to watch members of the military perform, as the country's new leadership strengthens its grip on power. Let's get more on this from our correspondent, Elisa Chukuma, in neighbouring Nigeria. Welcome, Elisa. Um, let's start with the charges and the evidence against the president. Well, Phil, uh, in a surprising uh, turn of events, uh, the uh, Junta leader, uh, Junta spokesperson came out last night on national TV in the country and said that they've got evidence uh, uh, to charge the outset leader, Mohamed Bezoum, for what they've called, uh, uh, you know, treason, high treason and uh, national security issues. Now, perhaps many might say this all pertains to his communications with uh, foreign nationals and international bodies. The likes of Anthony Blinken, as we know, has maintained some sort of consistent communication with Bezoum, even though he's still being held in captivity. The likes of UN uh, uh, Chief uh, Guterres had expressed his own concern and communications with uh, Bezoum, and it also seems like he's maintained constant communication with the, uh, his uh, ousted cabinet. Uh, some of them are not even in the country, some of them in France and different places. So uh, it does seem that uh, the uh, military junta is unwilling uh, to let go to for his release and reinstatement uh, of uh, Bazoum, which runs contrary to the demands of ECOWAS, which still wants his release and reinstatement. So a bit of a turn of events this time with uh, these charges brought against Mohamed Bazoum. And ECOWAS has been quite active uh, in this, uh, the economic community of West African states. Um, how does the junta uh, say uh, it, it will, on one hand, consider a diplomatic solution with ECOWAS uh, while... Um, saying it will try the president for treason. Well, that's the situation now, uh, Phil. We're seeing different sides of uh, this uh, military junta. There's the hot side, there's the cold side. Uh, on Saturday, we had uh, Muslim clerics from Nigeria who had a positive signal when they went to the uh, junta leaders and held meetings with Gianni himself, who, uh, who, according to what they're saying, is open to direct talks uh, with ECOWAS. There's uh, the doors open for peace and negotiations. Then on Sunday, they are charging Bezoum. Uh, you know, with, with this, uh, you know, high treason charges. So it's a bit of a, a, a you know, a two sides of the coin, uh, basically, from this military junta, which is not going to help uh, in their negotiations with ECOWAS, uh, based on the latest uh, uh, statements we're getting from the, the spokesperson. And the regime, the, the junta, seems to be going all out to uh, get the people behind them. Um, are they succeeding? 
Well, Phil, from all indications, uh, it looks like uh, they are. Uh, they've been able to drum up supports in rallies, filling up stadiums, and also having people, uh, you know, protest and support the military junta uh, with flags of the country and also with sometimes Russian flags. And even yesterday in the stadium, they had, you know, military officers, you know, also drumming up support on stage. It was almost like a musical concert uh, being performed in Niame. So they have been able to drum up local support in support of the junta uh, from so far we've seen. Good talking to you. Thanks for joining us. A DW correspondent, Elisa Chukuma.